AJ, who mm. is your MVP? Well, let me go ahead and get Ryan McMahon out of the way because we're talking about a Colorado, Rock, Colorado Rockies team that any time a team comes to town, I mean, it's like moving the slider down to beginner on, on, on the game. You know, so let's get him out of there. That's impressive with New and Garden winning the Indy 500. It doesn't happen every day. But come on, folks. It's Derek White. I mean, when have you ever seen a guy make a shot with literally 0.1 second on the clock? You can literally see the spacing between the light going off the backboard and the ball leaving his hand. As a person here in Boston working Boston radio, you can only imagine what the conversation would have been after people were screaming that this team gave up. So Derek White literally put on the Superman cape and had the best weekend for sure. Yeah, I, I love Ryan, Ryan McMahon's performance. You're right. It's Colorado. It's Coors Field. Everybody, chicks dig the long ball. Everybody gets to yeah. hit dingers in Colorado. He has been hot lately. So he's he's a close second for me. Ty Delandria um, scoring the, the game winner for the Stars to keep them alive in the Western Conference Finals. That's huge for me as well. Uh, Joseph Newgarden, congratulations. You drove faster than anybody else. I do that in rush hour traffic sometimes. Um, Derek White's got to be the guy. I, I mean, how how Derek White is it has got to be the, the the winner on MVP Monday. I mean, uh, this is this Boston Celtics team has. I don't want to say it's been starved because Jason Tatum. Look, Jason Tatum has shown up in big moments. He has. I don't want to take that away from him, but in this series in particular. I've looked at Jalen Brown more. I've looked at the supporting cast more. And there you go. There, there's there's one of your members of the supporting cast, Derek White. And as much as we want to celebrate him, and we should celebrate him, he's our he's our MVP Monday uh, winner, I think. I think we'll give it to Derek White today. Um, as much as we want to celebrate him for the putback at the buzzer to beat Miami, to force game seven, let's be honest. The last 30 seconds or so of that game were bad decision theater at its finest. You've got great opportunity, I think, right now. Stars at plus 550 to win the cup, I think, is a great bet. Because here's the other half of this. Let's say the Stars finish the comeback against Vegas, okay? Let's say they, for the fifth time in Stanley Cup playoff history, somebody comes back from down 3-0. They win the series in, in Game 7 back in Vegas. You're also telling me that they've got an advantage, at least I think, over the Florida Panthers, who will have sat around for 10 days in between series. And we could tie this back to the NBA Finals as well when we get back into talking about that, the Nuggets sitting around for a week and a half between yeah. series. There is a rest versus rust factor that I think really is going to come into play when we talk about the Florida Panthers, a team that got into the playoffs because they were playing well down the stretch. The last month of the season, the Panthers were on fire. They get into the playoffs. They've carried that momentum through the first three rounds of the playoffs and into the Stanley Cup final. So they're the favorites to win the Cup right now, plus 105. But if the Stars come roaring back to beat Vegas, come all the way back from down 3-0, they're going to have all the momentum. They're going to come into the Stanley Cup final hot. The Panthers will have been sitting around for a week and a half. And so not I shouldn't say I like Dallas necessarily to finish the comeback. I do like them to finish the comeback. But it's more about liking the value on the Stars right now at plus yeah. 550 on the Stanley Cup future because we're really only talking about, in my opinion, two wins. You win tonight. You win Game 7. You're in the Stanley Cup final. And I think at that point, the momentum carries them to a, a, a series win over Florida. And so I love, I absolutely love plus 550 on the Stanley Cup future for the Stars to win the Cup. Jokic's number may stay the same, but other players that have value, you'll see those numbers come down. Like if you're looking for a sleeper, I would look at Jamal Murray at now plus mm -hmm. 2,500. I think last week it was plus 1,600. Jamal Murray is that guy that may have to do all the scoring, and Jokic might be a guy that gets held low on the assist side. 
and Jamal Murray has to do a lot of the scoring. So Jamal Murray is an interesting play at 25 to one to be because he's the second choice for the Nuggets. Right. It's going to break your Bostonian heart, KJ, but I'm going to do it. I love Jimmy Butler right now at 13 to one for NBA Finals MVP because I do think the Heat are going to win tonight. I do mm-hmm. think the Heat rip out Celtics fans' hearts and show it to them while it's still beating like an Indiana Jones movie. And just it, it, and right there in the garden, garden, sorry, I got to drop the R, in Boston. Oh. And I, I think they do it. I, I think that it's because the Heat all year, you know, Eric Spolster talked about it after game six. Um, he said, you know, we've been down this road all year. We've dealt with adversity. They had to play in the play-in. They're the eighth seed, right? They've had to deal with it, and they've handled it exceedingly well. And Jimmy Butler, more often than not, has been the one showing up in those moments. You make a great point. Jason Tatum now facing up on Jimmy Butler more often. We were talking about that during the break. And and perhaps that's been a, a little bit of a neutralization to Butler over the last couple of games. But I really think you put Jimmy Butler in this situation, we're going to see that dog that's in there. And look, even if you think the Celtics somehow pull it out at the buzzer, another buzzer beater, right? Well, you're going to get the Heat plus seven and a half tonight. I, I, I would be on that. I'm more likely, to be to be quite honest, to be on the Heat money line. I think the Heat bounce back. They finish it off tonight, and they're headed to the NBA Finals against the Denver Nuggets. Uh, money line plus 240. Celtics are minus 300. I just, I've just i seen too, too many dents in the armor for the Celtics over the last, mm, over the last two series, really, and during the regular season as well. Other than that final little stretch run where they pressed and they looked like themselves again, I haven't seen it from the Celtics. And could you imagine, oh, could you imagine, KJ, the city of Boston, if the Bruins and Celtics both lose game seven at home, oh, my God. All the R's will be dropped. If I'm DeAndre Hopkins, I take into some account some of the things you mentioned. If a trade couldn't get done, which you would have figured, hey, this is an opportunity for Arizona to start rebuilding their roster Um, Mm -hmm. they're not going to have their quarterback to start the season. So this is a chance to go get pieces in the draft now. And they weren't able to pull that off. So that tells me that at some point, DeAndre Hopkins wants something comparable money-wise than what he was getting that to what he was getting in Arizona. And that's why the trade didn't happen. Like the price Mm -hmm. was too rich for some people. Right. And the other side of that is for him to go to Buffalo or to Kansas city, he's going to have to probably sacrifice some of the money that he wants. So, There has to be this team that might be in between, and I'm going to give you a name that nobody could see, but I could see it clearly, that could potentially give him the money and he can compete for a championship, and that's the Minnesota Vikings. They're the team that I think everybody's forgetting was in the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in love with Detroit, but Detroit wasn't there last year. Green Bay's still going to be bad, and the Bears are still trying to figure out what they are. With Adam Thielen now in Carolina, You have to think about how now teams are going to want to double-team Justin Jefferson all day. So you need to pull that off of Justin Jefferson for him to still be effective. If he goes to Buffalo, it's not like Stephon Diggs is going to be happy that he's no longer catching 105 passes a year and DeAndre Hopkins being like a 50, 60, 70 receiving receptions guy. It's not going to work out because you still have other things you've got to work with. But in Minnesota – They've got a solid running game, depending on what Dalvin Cook is going to do, but it looks like he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. You pair him with Justin Jefferson, now you have almost something like at least at an Adam Thielen level plus to defend for, and there's so much value on Minnesota, like plus 320 to win the division, and the money is on the, the Lions. I said, no, it's still on the Vikings because all they have to do is just get two cornerbacks (laughs) <laughs> and suddenly yeah. they might be able to defend a ball that goes in the air. So DeAndre I, Hopkins to Minnesota in a closed environment, which he's used to, with a quarterback that likes to get the ball to receivers and an opposite side of the field receiver that so much attention is going to be on, they could be dangerous if he goes there. If if we get to a point where, let's say the, the situation is reversed. Let's say it's Miami with, with the final shot, right? 3.2 seconds on the clock, inbounding just over half court. Uh, and they need a game-winning shot, right? But they can't get it to Jimmy Butler. Or Jimmy Butler can't get the shot. 
who this is the only thing that nags at me as someone who believes the Heat will win tonight is who is it that the ball goes to next? KJ brought up Max Struess. We've seen him hit shots before. It would be a great poetic story for him. But I just I don't I don't have confidence in anybody else to hit that shot other than Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, well, we you know there was a poll amongst the writers. If the Heat had won Game Six, Gabe Vincent would have been the Eastern Conference uh, MVP. He, he, that so there, I still think it's Caleb Martin. I think Caleb Martin has been the most, as as consistent as they can. That you know, I, I checked today at Bet MGM over two and a half three pointers is at plus money. I think for the for the Heat to win this game, that's going to have to happen. That's a bet that I'm for sure making. I think it's Caleb Martin, and I think Duncan Robinson had his moment in the sun, and he blew two wide open three pointers. So I think Duncan Robinson's out, and I think they're starting to feel gravity's pull, not having, you know, Kevin Love's been a non-factor, not having Tyler Hero in this series. I think it would have been Tyler Hero if he was in there, but I think for me, for my money, I'm going with uh, Caleb Martin to take that last shot. 